escape the nine to five and create your path to freedom. Hello from Penang, Malaysia, everyone. I'm here today um, on a quick visa run actually from Bali where I'm usually based and visiting my 80 year old aunt who's kind of like my second mom uh, and I'm here for the week. Um, as you can see, uh, there's tons of amazing scenery here in Penang, but specifically I am here for the food. <laughs> if you've been to Southeast Asia, this is the place for the best Southeast Asian food uh, in the side of the world. Um, but I'm taking a little bit of a break from my foodie tour to jump in here quickly for a few minutes uh, to actually talk about a big topic that was sort of buzzing from the last blog post, uh, the final recap year blog post I had in 2018. And one of the biggest uh, topics that people emailed me about that they wanted to um, talk more about and actually share a lot of their own insights around uh, this topic was uh, one of the points I made in the blog post about the definition of what's enough in our lives so that we can stop sort of chasing uh, success or chasing a version of happiness that maybe isn't quite aligned with the values that are truly our own. Um, and I can definitely relate to that because a, a big part of my own story of leaving my six-figure job in corporate many years ago uh, was being really attached right to that title to that number uh, attached to that salary I was making that really defined my identity um, having more things right like the house I just bought the car I just bought the sort of lifestyle choices I was making in my life uh, that kept me trapped in a life that was actually not making me happy uh, and a lot of you guys may have heard me talk about this previously in other blogs, like when I actually got real, right, with what I was making, you know, minus the taxes, the 40% taxes I was, I was needing to deal with in my type of salary I was making, dividing it by the number of hours, right, what I took home with the number of hours I actually worked to make that kind of living, uh, I really figured out the reality of the numbers was actually I was making less than my assistant, which was not a good thing, which helped me to recalibrate what was actually, um, important in my life and what was I really striving for, right? That was um, whether it was causing me to have an experience that I really wanted to have in my life or it was getting me further away from the experience I really wanted to have in my life and getting that reality check, right, of what's actually really happening, what I was actually working so hard towards was a huge uh, wake up call for me. And perhaps that's something uh, of an evaluation for you as well as all that money you're chasing, all that, uh, you know, that job title or the, the, the status you might be chasing may or may not be exactly um, the type of life that you actually truly want to have. Uh, but it is hard, you know, when we've got um, such messages that are giving to us in, in social media, for example, or what we see out there, right? This idea of keeping up with the Joneses. We have this message of owning more means we're more successful. Having more means we're more successful. Uh, even in business for myself, it's this constant standard of like reaching a seven figure business that defines what is a successful business. And I really want to call bullshit in a lot of that today because I think the importance of defining your own version of success and your own standard of happiness is going to be super important for your mental health and your mental well-being. I sure as hell um, had to revisit this concept last year when I had a massive burnout <laughs> in the last quarter of 2018 um, when I was at the peak of my success in my business, making the most money that I ever made in my business uh, and build a, a, a bigger team that was supposed to scale my time and my efforts in my business. But yet, even though the numbers looked better, the... Um, success level of what's on the outside looked better, uh, I didn't actually feel happier, which caused me to take a break at the last quarter of 2018 and recalibrate what was enough in my life, what was enough in my personal life that I think, um, I'll give you a link to the blog, of course, to take a look at that, but you know, that should help to instigate some questions for you as well is, you know, how will you define a good life? What do you define what's enough in what you earn? Uh, what do you need in your life, right? Living within your means is probably a good way to get to your financial goals and, and freedom in a much easier and healthier way. And defining that is super important. 
Um, I have to do that as well for myself to really think about what is that number that get, that can be enough for me to make in my business or, you know, a number that I would have probably had to think about when I was living back in Vancouver, what was the cost of living there. Uh, when I actually did a lot of that calculation, it really um, dawned on me that potentially my lifestyle, like what I actually value in my life may not cost that much. Um, hence why I decided to move to Bali where I can still have some of the great lifestyle choices like yoga and good food and travel without the cost of living in a big city and those adjustments might be necessary to live a life today that you can get to right now without having to uh, give up years and years of working really hard right to put your nest egg together um, you know in, in your savings account in order to achieve that when you're 65 perhaps that's not necessary perhaps some adjustments that can be made in your life about your standards of living um, and living within your means might get you there uh, a bit faster um, there is a cost to having more, right? To me, uh, when I owned a bigger home in Vancouver, when I had a car, when I uh, ate out all the time, when I sort of accumulated more things like clothes or possessions or assets, uh, there was a, a, a sense of heaviness that I also felt when I owned all those things. Uh, whereas now I sort of live um, really within my means. I could have bought a bigger house when I made more money in Bali, but I didn't. You know, I decided to refurbish a cottage and. Uh, live simply in my life. Um, there were times that I could afford bigger hotel rooms or bigger Airbnb homes that I could have probably um, splurged on just because my salary reflected on bigger purchases. But it's making that conscious choice not to do that uh, because you don't have to, that you can actually have a great quality of life without needing to spend more money all the time, which can actually re re relieve some of that pressure of making more and more and more money, right? There's a study sort of uh, done uh, I think probably about eight to ten years ago uh, where they were sort of measuring the correlation between happiness and earning potential right like for Americans that earned um, you know fifty thousand dollars a year to seventy five thousand dollars a year to a six figure uh, or a seven figure salary how much do their happiness really increase uh, and the studies show that actually majority of people aren't much happier past a seventy five thousand dollar a year salary right living in a western city now imagine living in other places like Bali where cost of living is lower what does that really mean maybe you could actually gain more happiness and financial freedom by making forty fifty thousand dollars a year maybe that pressure of you know constantly making six or seven figures as a salary or in your business may not be necessary uh, for you to achieve that level of happiness. Uh, so that is sort of something that I've been exploring, but I thought I wanted to jump in here to just pose that question of, you know, how would you define what's enough in your life? What are the sort of metrics that you might, um, be thinking about that actually is the true metrics that you're measuring your success and your version of happiness against that isn't what everyone else in society is telling you that is the metric but it's truly that pure metric right that you want to live uh, by right for me it's about I need to have the basic you know Maslow's hierarchy of needs right a roof over my head a comfortable home that I like living in um, uh, being able to travel right to particular places that I want to travel to every year uh, to be able to fly home to Vancouver and see my family and friends what's necessary uh, but also really to have time like time is also something that um, you can't put a dollar figure on I, I crave and desire more time uh, personal time to for myself right then actually working all the time so those adjustments is something that I've been making as well in my own standards of what is successful in business that maybe building a bigger team or having more money or more clients or more revenue isn't always the way to go when actually um, a few high-end intimate clients for the year right intimate programs um, making six figures or even less than that a year is enough for me uh, maybe that actually cuts my hours down to like 15 hours a week of working rather than these 40 hour a week uh, sort of standards that I might be used to right or you might be used to um, and those adjustments can absolutely be done today rather than waiting right till retirement or waiting till we hit a big pot of savings in order to finally live our lives um, I think this is a question we we need to get serious about and have a reality check on because I see so many people that are stuck in jobs they hate, stuck in lifestyles that they've created that they hate. Um, you know, I'm thinking of like a client of mine who was a Wall Street guy uh, that has a $5,000 a month Airbnb 
passive income property uh, and he can actually quit his job today. He's got over $100,000 in savings and yet for him, that standard of living, of having more, is not enough yet and hence why he keeps being pressured into obtaining that bonus he needs for the year to quit, right? And it's like three, four years later uh, of the day that he decided he would want to quit his job because that carrot and that temptation of staying longer for that bonus, for those commissions, for that bigger salary always will tend to trump some of the dreams that you have. Uh, and I think having that question of defining what's really enough for your life, what's actually the definition of happiness and what's uh, enough for your success and your 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 version of joy uh, is important so that you can adjust your standards, adjust your expectations and actually reach those goals of becoming more free a lot faster than you anticipated. Uh, so if any of this resonated with you today, um, I would love to hear from you. How do you define what's enough in your life? Maybe you have and you've been adjusting some of your lifestyle choices according to it uh, and having a lot more access to options and alternatives than uh, what you think is true. I would love for you to share in the comments in this blog or if you're watching it on the YouTube channel to do it there. Um, my next video blog is going to be um, a follow up really to this topic of how do we maintain this version of enoughness if we were to simplify our lives if we were to live in uh, the habit and practice of minimalism. And so one of the key things that I've been incorporating into my own lifestyle choices have been this idea of minimalism, where it doesn't have to be reserved for like hippies, uh, that actually there's a way of looking at minimalism where there's a sense of abundance rather than scarcity. Uh, and I've had to learn a lot about this, of what that meant for me. How do I uh, in, uh, utilize and leverage the habits and practices practices of minimalism in my life in order to have more and in order to experience more and in order to actually feel richer uh, in my life. So that is my next video blog uh, that I'm going to be um, filming for you. If you have particular questions that you have for me around living in the minimalism culture, uh, minimalism practices, please shoot me a question in the comments and I can't wait to shoot that video for you as well. Um, that's it for me today. I'm about to head out to do a quick explore of uh, the wonderful city of Penang on my quick little visa run, and I'll be back in Bali next week. Uh, but thank you so very much for joining me, and I hope this conversation sparks some ideas in your head today. Have you been desiring to create a life and career that gives you the freedom that you deserve, but you're not quite sure where to start? Well, let me be the guide to help you quit that job that's crushing your soul, discover your strengths, and make money doing something that you love and will care about. Head over to screwthecubicle.com to find tools and resources I've created just for you to help you jumpstart your escape plan from your 9 to 5 and launch a business you can run from anywhere.